How many people took readings exams? You have to go see a shrink afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> My mother was the only thing I worried about. <laughs> I was gonna have a bad summer if I blew that test. <laughs> and, and the littlest ones, you know, I see them. You can't tell a child in school, don't worry about this test. It doesn't mean it, it does mean something to them. Because they want to please their teacher, they want to please their parents. And then when the grades come back, and the kid has failed, as the chances are, 70% fail, they're gonna fail. You can't say, don't worry about that. They do worry about that. And the message that they're receiving is a difficult one to take away from them. And given the fact that we are in a system that's going to see incremental improvements, 4%, 5% a year, you can conceivably have a child who goes right through elementary and middle school and has never passed the test. Yeah. Has never passed the test. We cannot allow that to happen. Yeah. Right. Parents, it's in your hands. You have tremendous power, whether you believe it or not, I'm telling you, you do. You're not, parents are not coming in to ask me what I think. They know what I think. That if I had children that age, they wouldn't be near these tests. My grandchildren are not taking these tests. So some parents, I know parents think, well, I don't want my child to be a quitter. If this were a fair exam, send them in. When we took, when we took a test, you got a 70, you could be pretty sure you knew about 70% of the material. Not any longer. The other thing, why do we give tests? Let's just start from there. There's a couple of reasons. One is for diagnostic purposes. You want to see where the child's strengths and weaknesses are. And the other, and the other is, how, how it's our teaching been. 